Amidst heightened tensions between the West and Russia, Russian nuclear-capable warplanes were spotted over the Pacific. The jets were intercepted by American F-16s near Alaska. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, two of its uh, Tu-95MS strategic bombers flew over the Pacific Ocean, the Bering Sea and the Sea of Oak Oaks. Moscow says the nuclear capable jets performed a planned flight in the airspace over the neutral waters. The flight duration was more than 12 hours. The Russian Defense Ministry has asserted all the flights carried out uh, were in strict accordance with the international rules of the use of airspace. The aircraft were escorted by MiG-31 fighter planes and refueled while in the air. The flight by the Russian nuclear capable planes comes at a time when tensions are running high between the West and Russia, thanks to the ongoing Ukraine war, which has now entered its seventh month. The United States and NATO have warned that Russia could in fact test its nuclear forces in the near future. Meanwhile, according to the North American Aerospace Defense Command, US F-16 warplanes had intercepted two Russian bombers in the international airspace near Alaska on Tuesday. The Tu-95 bombers were intercepted after entering and operating within the Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone. Interceptions of Russian aircraft in the area, which is close to the country's far eastern border, are relatively frequent. Russia typically holds annual nuclear exercises around this time of year, though it is unclear the presence of the bombers was related to the drills. Earlier, we spoke to Peter Kushnik from Washington, D.C. He's the director of Nuclear Studies Institute at American University. Under normal circumstances, this would not be considered a serious threat. In fact, NORAD, in its press release, said that this was not a provocative action and that the Russian planes were in neutral territory, international airspace. So this would normally not be a serious threat or provocation, but right now things are so tense between the United States and Russia that anything is a potential threat. It can easily be misinterpreted, as often happens, and seen as an aggressive act. And then the United States or NORAD could respond in a military fashion. This time, they just peacefully escorted the Russian planes out of Alaska's air defense identification zone. So we didn't, we dodged the bullet this time. But when tensions are this high, it will not take much to set off the beginning of a military confrontation and the risk of a war. There has been a lot of back and forth with who supplied suicide drones to Russia. The attacks destroyed almost a third of Ukraine's power stations. President Zelensky claims Iran was the exporter, something Moscow and Tehran both have denied. Now it seems like more drones may be on their way. A barrage of deadly drone strikes in Ukraine this week rocked the capital of Kiev and beyond in the latest assault from Russian forces which Ukraine says have destroyed almost a third of the nation's power stations. Ukraine says the drones were made in Iran and supplied to Russia, a claim both Iran and Russia have denied. But now it appears more are on the way, as Reuters has learned exclusively of a weapons deal between Iran and Russia. Agreed to earlier this month, the deal would bring drones and surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missiles from Iran to Russia as it continues its war against Ukraine. That's according to two senior Iranian officials and two Iranian diplomats and confirmed by a Western official briefed on the matter. It's a move that is likely to infuriate the U.S. and other Western powers who see it as a breach of a 2015 U.N. Security Council resolution. But an Iranian diplomat, speaking to Reuters, rejected that assertion, saying, quote, where they are being used is not the seller's issue. U.S. State Department spokesman Vedant Patel said Russia was not only receiving drones from Iran, but that drone operators were also being trained there. We will continue to take practical, uh, aggressive steps to make these weapons sales harder, uh, including sanctions, uh, export control actions, against any entities involved, uh, and we have extensive tools available uh, at our arsenal uh, to disrupt 
not just uh, Iranian arms transfers, but also to continue to hold uh, Russia accountable uh, for their preposterous acts in Ukraine as well. One European diplomat said Russia was likely finding it more difficult to produce weapons for itself given the sanctions on its industrial sector and was therefore turning to imports from partners like Iran and North Korea. But on Tuesday, NATO said it was stepping in, announcing it will soon deliver air defense systems to Ukraine to help the country counter the drone attacks. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg called it, quote, the most important thing NATO can do.